steampunk is a subgenre of science fiction that typically features steam-powered machinery, especially in a setting inspired by industrialized Western civilization during the 19th century. Steampunk works are often set in an alternative history of the 19th century's British Victorian era or American Wild West, in a post-apocalyptic future during which steam power has regained mainstream use, or in a fantasy world that similarly employs steam power. Steampunk perhaps most recognizably features anachronistic technologies or retro-futuristic inventions as people in the 19th century might have envisioned them, and is likewise rooted in the era's perspective on fashion, culture, architectural style, and art. Such technology may include fictional machines like those found in the works of H. G. Wells and Jules Verne, or the modern authors Philip Pullman, Scott Westerfeld, Stephen Hunt and China Mia Copyrightville. Other examples of steampunk contain alternative history-style presentations of such technology as lighter-than-air airships, analog computers, or such digital mechanical computers as Charles Babbage's analytical engine. Steampunk may also incorporate additional elements from the genres of fantasy, horror, historical fiction, alternate history, or other branches of speculative fiction, making it often a hybrid genre. The term steampunk's first known appearance was in 1987, though it now retroactively refers to many works of fiction created even as far back as the 1950s or 1960s. Steampunk also refers to any of the artistic styles, clothing fashions, or subcultures, that have developed from the aesthetics of steampunk fiction, Victorian-era fiction, Art Nouveau design, and films from the mid-20th century. Various modern utilitarian objects have been modded by individual artisans into a pseudo-Victorian mechanical steampunk style, and a number of visual and musical artists have been described as steampunk. History, precursors, steampunk is influenced by, and often adopts the style of the 19th century scientific romances of Jules Verne, H. G. Wells, and Mary Shelley. Several works of art and fiction significant to the development of the genre were produced before the genre had a name. Perhaps the first steampunk short story is The Aerial Burglar by Percival Lee. The oldest precursor of this genre in film, Fritz Lang's masterpiece, Metropolis, may be the single most important early film to represent steampunk as an emerging stylistic genre. Titus Alone, by Mervyn Peake, anticipated many of the tropes of steampunk and the film Brazil was an important early cinematic influence toward creating the genre. In fine art, Remedios Varro's paintings combine elements of Victorian dress, fantasy, and techno-fantasy imagery. In television, one of the earliest mainstream manifestations of the steampunk ethos was the original CBS television series The Wild Wild West, which inspired the film Wild Wild West. In print, the A Nomad of the Time Streams trilogy by Michael Mursock, which began in 1971 with The Warlord of the Air, was also an influential precursor. Origin of the term, although many works now considered seminal to the genre were published in the 1960s and 1970s, the term steampunk originated in the late 1980s as a tongue-in-cheek variant of cyberpunk. It seems to have been coined by science fiction author K. W. Jetta, who was trying to find a general term for works by Tim Powers, James Blaylock, and himself are Euro all of which took place in a 19th century setting and imitated conventions of such actual Victorian speculative fiction as H. G. Wells' The Time Machine. In a letter to science fiction magazine Locus, printed in the April 1987 issue, Jetta wrote, Dear Locus, enclosed is a copy of my 1979 novel Morlock Knight. I'd appreciate your being so good as to root it Farron Miller, as it's a prime piece of evidence in the great debate as to who in the Powers Jetter fantasy triumvirate was writing in the Gonzo historical manner first. Though of course, I did find her review in the March Locus to be quite flattering. Personally, I think Victorian fantasies are going to be the next big thing, as long as we can come up with a fitting collective term for Powers, Blaylock and myself. Something based on the appropriate technology of the era. Like steampunks, perhaps. Modern steampunk, while Jetta's Morlock Knight and Infernal Devices, Powers the Anubis Gates, and Blaylock's Lord Kelvin's Machine were the first novels to which Jetta's neologism would be applied, 
they gave the term little thought at the time. However, they were far from the first modern science fiction writers to speculate on the development of steam-based technology or alternative histories. Keith Lormer's Worlds of the Imperium and Ronald W. Clark's Queen Victoria's Bomb apply modern speculation to past-age technology and society. Michael Moorsock's Warlord of the Air is another early example. Harry Harrison's novel A Transatlantic Tunnel, Hurrah! portrays a British empire of an alternative year 1973, full of atomic locomotives, coal-powered flying boats, ornate submarines, and Victorian dialogue. In February 1980 Richard A. Lupoff and Steve Stiles published the first chapter of their ten-part comic strip The Adventures of Professor Thintwistle and his incredible Ether Flyer. The first use of the word in a title was in Paul D. Filippo's 1995 steampunk trilogy, consisting of three short novels, Victoria, Hottentots, and Walt and Emily, which, respectively, imagine the replacement of Queen Victoria by a human newt clone, an invasion of Massachusetts by Lovecraft monsters, and a love affair between Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson. Media Literary The 1981 educational book, Elementary Basic, Learning to Program Your Computer in Basic with Sherlock Holmes by Henry Singer and Andrew Ledger may have been the first fictional work to depict the use of Charles Babbage's analytical engine in an adventure story. The instructional book, aimed at young programming students, depicts Holmes using the engine as an aid in his investigations, and offer program listings to perform simple data processing tasks required to solve the fictional cases. The book even describes a possible enhancement to Babbage's machine. A device that allows the engine to be used remotely, through telegraph lines. Companion Volumes, Elementary Pascal Learning to Program Your Computer in Pascal with Sherlock Holmes and From Baker Street to Binary, an introduction to computers and computer programming with Sherlock Holmes, were also written. In 1988 the first version of the science fiction role-playing game Space, 1889 was published. It is set in an alternative history in which certain discredited Victorian scientific theories were probable, thus leading to new technologies. Contributing authors included Frank Chadwick, Lauren Wiseman, and Marcus Rowland. William Gibson and Bruce Sterling's 1990 novel The Difference Engine is often credited with bringing widespread awareness of steampunk. This novel applies the principles of Gibson and Sterling's cyberpunk writings to an alternative Victorian era where Ada Lovelace and Charles Babbage's proposed steam-powered mechanical computer, which Babbage called a difference engine, was actually built, and led to the dawn of the information age more than a century ahead of schedule. This setting was different from most steampunk settings in that it takes a dim and dark view of this future rather than the more prevalent utopian versions. Nick Jevers's 2008 original anthology Extraordinary Engines features newer steampunk stories by some of the genre's writers, as well as other science fiction and fantasy writers experimenting with neo-Victorian conventions. A retrospective reprint anthology of steampunk fiction was released, also in 2008 by Tekine Publications. Edited by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer and appropriately entitled Steampunk, it is a collection of stories by James Blaylock, whose Narbondo trilogy is typically considered steampunk. Jay Lake, author of the novel Mainspring, sometimes labeled Clockpunk. The aforementioned Michael Mursock. As well as Jess Nevins, known for his annotations to the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Younger readers have also been targeted with steampunk themes by authors such as Philip Reeve and Scott Westerfeld. Reeve's quartet Mortal Engines is set far in Earth's future where giant moving cities consume each other in a battle for resources, a concept Reeve coined as municipal Darwinism. Westerfeld's Leviathan trilogy is set during the First World War, fought between the Clankers, who use steam technology, and Darwinists, who use genetically engineered creatures instead of machines. While most of the original steampunk works had a historical setting, later works often place steampunk elements in a fantasy world with little relation to any specific historical era. Historical steampunk tends to be science fiction that presents an alternative history. It also contains real locales and persons from history with alternative fantasy technology. Fantasy world steampunk, such as China Mia copyright Phil's Perdido Street Station. 
Alan Campbell's Scar Knight, and Stephen Hunt's Jackelian novels, on the other hand, present steampunk in a completely imaginary fantasy realm, often populated by legendary creatures coexisting with steam era and other anachronistic technologies. However, the works of China mere copyright villain similar authors are sometimes referred to as belonging to the new weird rather than steampunk. Self-described author of far-fetched fiction Robert Rankin has increasingly incorporated elements of steampunk into narrative worlds, both Victorian and reimagined contemporary. In 2009, he was made a fellow of the Victorian Steampunk Society. Steampunk settings, Victorian, in general, the category includes any recent science fiction that takes place in a recognizable historical period in which the Industrial Revolution has already begun, but electricity is not yet widespread. It places an emphasis on steam or spring-propelled gadgets. The most common historical steampunk settings are the Victorian and Edwardian eras, though some in this Victorian steampunk category can go as early as the beginning of the Industrial Revolution and as late as the end of World War I. Some examples of this type include the novel The Difference Engine, the comic book series League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, the Disney animated film Atlantis, The Lost Empire, the anime series Full Metal Alchemist, Scott Westerfeld's Leviathan Trilogy, and the role-playing game Space, 1889. The anime film Steamboy is another good example of Victorian steampunk, taking place in an alternate 1866 where steam technology is far more advanced than it ever was in real life. Some, such as the comic series Girl Genius, have their own unique times and places despite partaking heavily of the flavor of historic times and settings. Carol Zeman's film The Fabulous World of Jules Verne is a very early example of cinematic steampunk. Based on Jules Verne novels, Zeman's film imagines a past based on those novels which never was. Another early example of historical steampunk in cinema includes Hayao Miyazaki's anime films such as Laputa, Castle in the Sky, containing many archetypal anachronisms characteristic of the steampunk genre. Historical steampunk usually leans more towards science fiction than fantasy, but a number of historical steampunk stories have incorporated magical elements as well. For example, Morlock Knight, written by K. W. Jetta, revolves around an attempt by the wizard Merlin to raise King Arthur to save the Britain in 1892 from an invasion of Morlocks from the future. Paulgnan's Boilerplate, a biography of a robot in the late 19th century, began as a website that garnered international press coverage when people began believing that Photoshop images of the robot with historic personages were real. The site was adapted into an illustrated hardbound book Boilerplate, History's Mechanical Marvel, and published by Abrams in October 2009. Because the story was not set in an alternative history, and in fact contained accurate information about the Victorian era, some booksellers referred to the tome as historical steampunk. American West, another setting is Western steampunk, which overlaps with both the Weird West and science fiction Western subgenres. Several other categories have arisen, sharing similar names, including dieselpunk, clockwork punk, and others. Most of these terms were coined as supplements to the GURPS role-playing game, and are not used in other contexts. Post-apocalyptic, Mary Shelley's The Last Man, set near the end of the 21st century after a plague had brought down civilization, was probably the ancestor of post-apocalyptic steampunk literature. Post-apocalyptic steampunk is set in a world where some cataclysm has precipitated the fall of civilization and steam power once again gains ascendancy, such as in Hayao Miyazaki's post-apocalyptic anime Future Boy Conan, where a war fought with super weapons has devastated the planet. Robert Brown's novel, The Wrath of Fate is set in a Victorian-esque world where an apocalypse was set into motion by a time-traveling mishap. Cherie Priest's Bone Shaker series is set in a world where a zombie apocalypse happened during the Civil War era. The Peshawar Lancers by S.M. Sterling is set in a post-apocalyptic future in which a meteor shower in 1878 caused the collapse of industrialized civilization. The movie Nine is also set in a post-apocalyptic world after a self-aware war machine ran amok. Steampunk magazine even published a book called A Steampunk's Guide to the Apocalypse about how steampunks could survive should such a thing actually happen. 
alternative world, since the 1990s, the application of the steampunk label has expanded beyond works set in recognizable historical periods, to works set in fantasy worlds that rely heavily on steam or spring-powered technology. Fantasy steampunk settings abound in tabletop and computer role-playing games. Notable examples include Skies of Arcadia, Rise of Nations, Rise of Legends, and Arcanum, of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. The gnomes and goblins in World of Warcraft also have technological societies that could be described as steampunk as they are vastly ahead of the technologies of men, but are not magical like those of the elves. The race of elves known as the Dwemer from the Elder Scrolls series of games also use steam-powered machinery, with gigantic brass-like gears throughout their underground cities. Amidst the historical and fantasy subgenres of steampunk is a type which takes place in a hypothetical future or a fantasy equivalent of our future, involving the domination of steampunk-style technology and aesthetics. Examples include Jean-Pierre Junet and Marc Caro's The City of Lost Children, Turn A Gun Dam, Trick Gun and Disney's film Treasure Planet. In 2011, musician Thomas Dolby heralded his return to music after a 20-year hiatus with an online steampunk alternate fantasy world called The Floating City, to promote his album, A Map of the Floating City. Miscellaneous, though the other listed settings are the most frequent, steampunk is quite flexible, able to mold into every possible time period, place, and person. Many parody tales have proven this, such as Steam Wars, Steampunk Cinderella, and the like. Fantasy and Horror Kajal Folio introduced the term gaslight romance, gaslamp fantasy, which John Clute and John Grant define as steampunk stories. Most commonly set in a romanticized, smoky, 19th century London, as a gaslight romances. But the latter category focuses nostalgically on icons from the late years of that century and the early years of the 20th century, on Dracula, Jekyll and Hyde, Jack the Ripper, Sherlock Holmes and even Tarzan, and can normally be understood as combining supernatural fiction and recursive fantasy, though some gaslight romances can be read as fantasies of history. Some such as author-artist James Richardson Brown used the term steamgoth to refer to steampunk expressions of fantasy and horror with a darker bent. Television, Films and Video Games, the 1965 television series The Wild Wild West, as well as the 1999 film, featured many of the elements of advanced steam-powered technology set in the Wild West time period of the United States. The 1979 film Time After Time has Herbert George H. G. Wells following a surgeon named John Leslie Stevenson into the future, as John is suspected of being Jack the Ripper. Both use Wells' time machine separately to travel. The 1982 American TV series QED, set in Edwardian England, starred Sam Waterston as Professor Quentin Everett de Beriel. The professor was an inventor and scientific detective, in the mold of Sherlock Holmes. In the show, the lead character was known primarily by his initials, QED. The Adventures of Briscoe County, Jr., a Fox Network 1993 TV science fiction western set in the 1890s, featured elements of steampunk as represented by the character Professor Wickwire, whose inventions were described as the coming thing. The short-lived 1995 TV show Legend on UPN, set in 1876 Arizona, featured such classic inventions as a steam-driven quadravelocipede, and night vision goggles, and starred John Delancey as a thinly disguised Nikola Tesla. Alan Moore's and Kevin O'Neill's 1999 The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen graphic novel series greatly popularized the steampunk genre. The sci-fi series Warehouse 13 features many steampunk-inspired objects and artifacts, including computer designs created by steampunk artisan Richard Negi also known as Datamancer. Also, the sci-fi miniseries Tin Man incorporates a considerable amount of steampunk-inspired themes into a reimagining of L. Frank Baum's The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. The BBC series Doctor Who also incorporates steampunk elements. During season 14 of the show in 1976 the formerly futuristic-looking interior set was replaced with a Victorian-styled wood panel and brass affair. 
In the 1996 American co-production the TARDIS interior was redesigned to resemble an almost Victorian library with the central control console made up of eclectic and anachronistic objects. Modified and streamlined for the 2005 revival of the series, the TARDIS console continued to incorporate steampunk elements, including a Victorian typewriter and gramophone. Several storylines can be classed as steampunk, for example, the evil of the Daleks where Victorian scientists invent a time travel device. Steampunk has begun to attract notice from mainstream American sources as well. For example, the episode of the TV series Castle entitled Punked, which aired on October 11, 2010, prominently featured the steampunk subculture and used Los Angeles area steampunks as extras sci-fi channel's 2013 series Robot Combat League features one robot named Steampunk looking much like a giant brass boiler with pressure gauges for eyes. The Chaos Engine is a run-and-gun video game inspired by the Gibson Sterling novel The Difference Engine, set in a Victorian steampunk age. Developed by the Bitmap Brothers, it was first released on the Amiga in 1993 with a sequel appearing in 1996. Other steampunk-styled video games include Final Fantasy VI, Final Fantasy IX, Late Middle Ages Victorian Age styled Thief series and Dishonored stealth games and Bioshock Infinite. The graphic adventure puzzle video games Meist, Riven and Meist 3, Exile take place in an alternate steampunk universe where elaborate infrastructures have been built to run on steam power. The comic book series of Hellboy created by Mike Mignola and the two Hellboy films featuring Ron Perlman and directed by Guillermo del Toro all have steampunk elements. In the comic book and the first film, Carl Wiprecht Krenan is a Nazi SS scientist who has an addiction to surgery and had many mechanical prostheses, not least a clockwork heart. Johann Krauss features in the comic and in the second film, Hellboy 2, The Golden Army, and is an ectoplasmic medium. This second film also features the Golden Army itself which is a collection of 70x70 mechanical steampunk warriors. The 2012 tabletop role-playing game Tifra, the steampunk RPG is explicitly steampunk in nature with several fantasy elements, such as other races, but has no magic. Art and design, many of the visualizations of steampunk have their origins with, among others, Walt Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, including the design of the story's submarine the Nautilus, its interiors, and the crew's underwater gear and George Powell's 1960 film The Time Machine, with the design of the time machine itself. This theme is also carried over to Disney's theme parks in the design of the mysterious island section of Tokyo Disney Sea theme park, and Disneyland Paris Discoveryland area. Steampunk design emphasizes a balance between the form and function. Like the arts and crafts movement, this blurs the line between tool and decoration. Various modern utilitarian objects have been modified by enthusiasts into a pseudo-Victorian mechanical steampunk style. Example objects include computer keyboards and electric guitars. The goal of such redesigns is to employ appropriate materials with design elements and craftsmanship consistent with the Victorian era, rejecting the aesthetic of industrial design. In 1994, the Paris metro station at Arts A. Mar copyright years was redesigned by Belgian artist Francois Schuiten in steampunk style to honor the works of Jules Verne. The station is reminiscent of a submarine, sheathed in brass with giant cogs in the ceiling and portholes that look out onto fanciful scenes. The artist group Kinetic Steamworks brought a working steam engine to the Burning Man Festival in 2006 and 2007. The group's founding member, Sean Orlando, created a steampunk treehouse that has been displayed at a number of festivals. The steampunk treehouse is now permanently installed at the Dogfish Head Brewery in Milton, Delaware. In my Euro June 2008, multimedia artist and sculptor Paul St. George exhibited outdoor interactive video installations linking London and Brooklyn, New York, in a Victorian-era style telectroscope. Utilizing this device, New York promoter Evelyn Creat organized a transatlantic wave between steampunk enthusiasts from both cities, briefly prior to white mischiefs around the world in 80 days steampunk-themed event. 
In 2009 artist Tim Etherell created a large wall piece for Questacon representing the concept of the clockwork universe. This steel artwork contains moving gears, a working clock, and a movie of the moon's terminator in action. The 3D Moon movie was created by Anthony Williams. In 2012 artist Bizartistique created a mechanical ceramic balloon hope using more techniques demonstrating the most basic elements of steampunk in the distinctive style based on vintage looks and textures. The mottled metal plating speaks to the retro aesthetic while the metal stitches refer back to the post-apocalyptic future, from October 2009 through February 2010, the Museum of the History of Science. Oxford hosted the first major exhibition of steampunk art objects, curated and developed by New York artist and designer, Art Donovan who also exhibited his own electro-futuristic lighting sculptures and presented by Dr. Jim Bennett, museum director. From redesigned practical items to fantastical contraptions, this exhibition showcased the work of 18 steampunk artists from across the globe. The exhibition proved to be the most successful and highly attended in the museum's history and attracted more than 80,000 visitors. The event was detailed in the official artist's journal, The Art of Steampunk by Curator Donovan. In November 2010, the Libratory Steampunk Art Gallery was opened by Damien McNamara in Oamara, New Zealand. Created from paper mar sent car copyright to resemble a large subterranean cave and filled with industrial equipment from yesteryear, ray guns and general steampunk works. Its purpose is to provide a place for steampunkers in the region to display artwork for sale all year long. A year later, a more permanent gallery, Steampunk Headquarters, was opened in the former Meeks Grain Elevator building across the road from the wool store, and has since become a notable tourist attraction for Oamara. In 2012, the Mobilis in Mobili, an exhibition of steampunk art and appliance art exhibit made its debut. Originally located at New York City's Worcester Street Social Club, the exhibit featured working steampunk tattoo systems designed, respectively, by Bruce Rosenbaum of the Modvik and owner of the Steampunk House, Joey Dr. Grim Marsorchsi, and Christopher Conti showing very different approaches. Bicycles, cell phones, guitars, Timepieces and entertainment systems rounded out the display. The opening night exhibition featured a live performance by steampunk band Frenchie and the Punk. Fashion Steampunk fashion has no set guidelines, but tends to synthesize modern styles with influences from the Victorian era. This may include gowns, corsets, petticoats, and bustles. Suits with waistcoats, coats, top hats, tailcoats, and spats or military-inspired garments. Steampunk-influenced outfits are usually accented with several technological and period accessories, timepieces, parasols, flying driving goggles, and ray guns. Modern accessories like cell phones or music players can be found in steampunk outfits, after being modified to give them the appearance of Victorian-made objects. Post-apocalyptic elements, such as gas masks, ragged clothing and tribal motifs can also be included. Aspects of steampunk fashion have been anticipated by mainstream high fashion, the Lolita fashion and aristocrat styles, neo-Victorianism, and the romantic goth subculture. In 2005, Kate Lambert, known as Carto, founded the first steampunk clothing company, Steampunk Couture, mixing Victorian and post-apocalyptic influences. In 2013, IBM predicted, based on an analysis of more than a half million public posts on message boards, blogs, social media sites and news sources, that a Euro steampunk, a Euro unregistered trademark a subgenre inspired by the clothing, technology and social mores of Victorian society, will be a major trend to bubble up and take hold of the retail industry. Indeed, high fashion lines such as Prada, Dolce & Gabbana, Versace, Chanel and Christian Dior had already been introducing steampunk styles on the fashion runways. And in episode 7 of Lifetime's Project Runway, under the Gune reality series, contestants were challenged to create avant-garde steampunk chic looks. Music Steampunk music is very broadly defined, as Caroline Sullivan says in The Guardian, Internet debates rage about exactly what constitutes the steampunk sound. 
Apni Parker Euro unregistered trademark S lead singer, Robert Brown, very loosely defined it as, mixing Victorian elements and modern elements. Joshua Pfeiffer is quoted as saying a Euro OE is for Paul Rowland, if anyone deserves credit for spearheading steampunk music, it is him. He was one of the inspirations I had in starting my project. He was writing songs about the first attempt at manned flight, and an Edwardian airship raid in the mid 80 a Euro unregistered trademark s long before almost anyone else a Euro Euro. Thomas Dolby is also considered one of the early pioneers of retrofuturist music. Amanda Palmer was once quoted as saying, Thomas Dolby is to steampunk what Iggy Pop was to punk. Since there is little consensus on the sound steampunk music should take, there is a broad range of musical styles and interpretations among steampunk musical acts, from industrial dance and world music to folk rock, punk cabaret to straightforward punk, canatic to industrial, hip-hop to opera, darkwave to progressive rock, barbershop to big band. Steampunk has also appeared in the work of musicians who do not specifically identify as steampunk. For example, the music video of Turn Me On by David Guetta featuring Nicki Minaj takes place in a steampunk universe where Guetta creates human droids. In addition, the 2012 album Clockwork Angels and its supporting tour by progressive rock band Rush contain lyrics, themes and imagery based around steampunk. In 2012, Thomas Dolby headlined the first Steamstock Outdoor Steampunk Music Festival in Richmond, California, alongside steampunk favorites Apney Park, Frenchie and the Punk, Vernian Process, Lee Presson and the Nails and others. Culture and Community Because of the popularity of steampunk, there is a growing movement of adults that want to establish steampunk as a culture and lifestyle. Some fans of the genre adopt a steampunk aesthetic through fashion, home decor, music, and film. This may be described as neo-Victorianism, which is the amalgamation of Victorian aesthetic principles with modern sensibilities and technologies. In September 2012, a panel was held at Stanley's Comiques Expo, chaired by steampunk entertainer Veronique Chevalier and with panelists including magician Pop Haddon and members of the steampunk performance group The League of Steam which suggested that because steampunk was inclusive of and incorporated ideas from various other subcultures such as goth, neo-Victorian, and cyberpunk as well as a growing number of fandoms, it was fast becoming a superculture rather than a mere subculture. Other steampunk notables such as Professor Elemental have expressed similar views about steampunk's inclusive diversity. Some have proposed a steampunk philosophy, sometimes with punk-inspired anti-establishment sentiments, and typically bolstered by optimism about human potential. Steampunk became a common descriptor for homemade objects on the craft network Etsy between 2009 and 2011, though many of the objects and fashions bear little resemblance to earlier established steampunk descriptions. Thus the craft network may not strike observers as sufficiently steampunk to warrant the description. Comedian April Winchell, author of the book, Regretsy, where DIY meets WTF, catalogued some of the most egregious and humorous examples on her website, Regretsy. The blog was popular among steampunks and even inspired a music video that went viral in the community and was acclaimed by steampunk notables. Social events 2006 saw the first Salon Con, a neo-Victorian steampunk convention. It ran for three consecutive years and featured artists, musicians, authors, Salons led by people prominent in their respective fields, workshops and panels on steampunk a euro as well as a seance, ballroom dance instruction, and the Kronenorts Parade. The event was covered by MTV in the New York Times. Since then a number of popular steampunk conventions have sprung up the world over, with names like Steamcon, the Steampunk World's Fair and Up in the Ether, the Steampunk Convention. Steampunk has also become a regular feature at San Diego Comic Con International in recent years, with the Saturday of the four-day event being generally known among steampunks as Steampunk Day, and culminating with a photo shoot for the local press. In 2010 this was recorded in the Guinness Book of World Records as the world's largest steampunk photo shoot. In 2013, Comic Con announced four official 2013 t-shirts, one of them featured the official Rip Geary Comic Con Toucan mascot in steampunk attire. 
The Saturday Steampunk After Party has also become a major event on the Steampunk social calendar. In 2010 the headliners included The Slow Poisoner, An Extraordinary Gentleman and Voltaire, with Veronique Chevalier as Mistress of Ceremonies and Special Appearance by the League of Steam, and in 2011 UXG returned with Abney Park. Steampunk also has sprung up recently at Renaissance festivals and Renaissance fairs, nationwide. Some have organized events or a steampunk day, while other fests simply support an open environment for donning steampunk attire. The Bristol Renaissance Fair in Kenosha, Wisconsin, on the Wisconsin-Illinois border, featured a steampunk costume contest during the 2012 season. The previous two seasons featured increasing participation in the phenomenon. Steampunk also has a growing following in the UK and Europe. The largest European event is Weekend at the Asylum, held at the Lawn, Lincoln every September since 2009. Organized as a not-for-profit event by the Victorian Steampunk Society, the Asylum is a dedicated steampunk event which takes over much of the historical quarter of Lincoln, England, along with Lincoln Castle. In 2011 there were over 1,000 steampunks in attendance. The event features the Empire Ball, Majors Review, Bazaar Eclectica and the International Tea Dueling Final. See also Retrotronics, TikTok, References Further reading, Orkin, Paul K. Science Fiction Before 1900. ISBN A0-8057-0952-5A, Donovan, Art. The Art of Steampunk Extraordinary Devices and Ingenious Contraptions from the Leading Artists of the Steampunk Movement. Fox Chapel Publishers. ISBN A978-1-56523-5 73 one Ehrlich, Richard D. Dunn, Thomas P. Clock Workworlds. ISBN A0-313-23026-9 Guillemi, Alban. Louis Laloon. ISBN A2 226 16675 0. Landon, Brooks. Science Fiction After 1900. ISBN A 0 415 93888 0. Nevins, Jess. The Encyclopedia of Fantastic Victoriana. Monkey Brain Books. ISBN A 978-1-932265-15-6A, Nova Express 2. Winter 1988A, Slosser, George. Shippy, Tom. Fiction 2000, Cyberpunk and the Future of Narrative. ISBN A 0-8203-1425-0A, Suvan, Darko. Victorian Science Fiction in the UK. ISBN A 0 8161 8435 6. Westfall, Gary. Slosser, George. Learby, David. Worlds Enough in Time. ISBN A 0 313 31706 2. -a. Strongman, J. Steampunk The Art of Victorian Futurism. Korea Books. ISBN A 978-1-907621-03-1. External links. Off Book. Steampunk documentary produced by Off Book. Retro Portal PL. Polish Steampunk Network. Steampunk Empire. Steampunk Social Portal.